My name is John York and we're here at Legacy Gardens in Española, New Mexico. We're going to talk about our climate battery that we have installed in the greenhouse today. Behind me here you can see the fan for the climate battery. What this does is it pumps air into the ground into a series of pipes that we have. We've got nearly a mile of four inch corrugated tubing in the ground in two layers and by pumping this warm moist air into the ground it charges the soil with heat during the day that it can pump out during the nighttime or in the winter to maintain above freezing temperatures a more mild climate in here continuously. This is going to allow us to have uh, basically a subtropical environment year round in this greenhouse. Up here in the mountains in very high elevation it's really cold at night and really hot in the daytime. To be able to start as early as we did and then next season to continue all year round with these green vegetable crops, very late tomatoes. We're probably going to seed our tomatoes for the next season in January in here and be able to get production very early in the spring with them. You want to go ahead and turn it on and yeah. uh, you can see how... Okay, so here at, at this point in the greenhouse um, we have two fans they go into these barrels, which go into the ground, and there's a large pipe in the ground that's a manifold that then feeds into all the smaller pipes. And we'll go look at the end where I've still got it uncovered, and you can kind of see how that all feeds together a little bit So better. here you can see our exhaust barrel, and at either end of the greenhouse in each bay we've got an exhaust barrel. So these large pipes are connected to all these small pipes. So from the end where the exhaust fan is, it blows under the ground, at two layers. So we've got one pipe at 30 inches, one pipe at about 15 inches, and that repeats every two feet connecting into these large pipes. So it is really a huge underground exhaust system. And what's the length of this greenhouse here? This is a 96 foot greenhouse. In this bay the climate battery system is about 70 feet long and in the other bays it's 86 feet long. Amazing. And you have uh couple of these set up. There's one down on that end as well, I so see. So each bay has its own independent climate battery system. Wow. So the, uh, the capacity of these fans in here will allow us, when they're all running at maximum, to cycle the air in the greenhouse, the complete volume of air of the greenhouse, in through the ground and back out 15 times an hour. Amazing. So it acts as an air conditioner on a hot day like this. And then you also have these, uh, these large ventilation ducts up here. Yeah, so we have the large ventilation fans for when it gets too warm during the day. We'll still sometimes keep banking the heat for at night if we know it's going to be cold. But otherwise, the, uh, the fans for the climate battery will shut off and just allow the exhaust fans to go. At the other end here, you can see our louvers. We've got four banks of louvers that are 4 foot by 20 foot. They will have a wet wall system installed across the face of them to get the evaporative cooling effect as well. There's going to be shade cloth pulled over the top of the greenhouse. So we have multiple ways of dealing with heat and cold in here, but still with a pretty minimal electrical cost. Let's go down the other end and take a look over there. Sure. All right, you can see here our 6,000 gallon pond that we have inside the greenhouse. It too serves multiple functions. Right now it's acting as a heat sink and an extra source of humidity. We have a very dry climate here and so we want more humidity for the plants to be healthy, to grow well. The climate battery also works much better if there is humid air to help condense the heat into the ground. Eventually we're going to build uh, a filter for this pond so that we can keep it nice and clean and raise some fish in it and then we'll have another system of raising fish to generate fertilizer. We'll set up some aquaponic systems around the perimeter of the pond and once it's well established we'll use that water to help fertilize the beds as well. So you're saying you not only use this to create moisture in here but also because it's like a solid mass it keeps the temperature steady. Exactly. So this really creates a much more stable environment especially right around the pond. When we first installed it and we had the plastic up, but we didn't have the climate battery or anything else running. Uh, the temperatures were hitting in the, the low single digits outside at night. And inside there would be a thin layer of ice on the pond at the very beginning of the morning. But the temperature at the bottom of the pond was still 40 degrees. And it never fluctuated much lower than that ever. 
And then once we got the climate battery running and everything, it went up into the 50s and never went below that. And how cold was it getting at night, on the cold nights? It was getting into the single digits when it was doing that. Yeah. Yeah, we had many nights in the teens here. And, and there's really no insulation, it's just basically a, a sheet of plastic up there. It is. On the north so. wall here, we have full insulation. We've got regular R19 plus another R5 from the foam board. But how we really gain insulation is by sinking the floor of the greenhouse four feet in the ground. So at this height, you can see straight outside that that's ground level out there. So we brought this down and that helps us to maintain cooler temperatures in the summer, warmer temperatures in the winter. So John, I think we're really curious as to how you water this place because uh, I know I wouldn't want to be coming out here every day and watering this whole thing by hand. It's a lot of work to water by hand. We typically do that when we first plant the beds. So we have new seedlings. We want to make sure we get even moisture or if we're direct seeding the bed, which we did in, with many of these beds. But after the plants start to sprout, we will rely just on this drip irrigation here. We're using the Toro drip tape. And at intervals of eight inches, there's a, a small slit in the tape. And so water is weeping out of that slowly. And about every eight inches, and then we space them apart by about eight inches, and that gives us a really even coverage of moisture throughout the whole bed. Great, and I know that um, a lot of places, if you're using water that is minerals, it tends to clog up those drip tapes, and some places have to replace it once a year. Yeah, we expect that we'll be replacing this drip tape about every two years. We have a well that does have hard water, but it's not, not too terrible. Uh, we could look at in the future putting a filter system on to mitigate that. But the cost is actually pretty minimal for this stuff. This whole greenhouse was well under $200 for the drip tape. There's a local company that was cheaper than getting it off the internet just to save on the shipping. And so that's, that's the route we'll go. We'll just consider this to be somewhat expendable, uh, but we should be able to rely on it through this season and next. Yeah, I see the plants are really uh, doing really well with the system you have here. Yeah, we've got it set up on an automatic system with the Orbit digital timer. So I can have it run in the nighttime when I'm not here. I show up the next day, everything's watered for me. That makes it really simple. It takes about an hour or so to thoroughly saturate the beds. So each tape would run for about an hour? Well, it's set up in zones. So okay. these four beds in the middle are a zone and then Everything else is in sets of three beds at a time. So it'll run, the, it'll start on one side, do zone one, two, three, four, five. So an hour total with all the different zones? No, an hour to each zone. Hour to each and zone. It, I Got do it. that about twice a week at this point in the year. It'll okay. increase as, as the, it gets hotter. Only and twice as the, a week? And as the plants okay. get bigger. Yeah, only twice a week. It's very efficient. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. So John, I noticed you have some marigolds growing in here. Can you tell us what the purpose of those are? So we like to grow beneficial flowers in with our food crops for a number of different reasons. This particular plant, the marigold, does two main functions for us. It attracts beneficial insects which predate on the harmful pests and the roots exude a toxin that repels harmful nematodes. Wow, yeah. That, yeah, that's really impressive information. Yeah, and it also helps to attract uh, pollinators. So we grow some things that are uh, for these purposes, some that are for commercial purposes. So we'll have some celosia, some dahlias, and other interesting flowers that we can sell as cut flowers alongside our crops at the farmer's markets too. But they, they also attract pollinators for all the other crops. So the tomatoes especially, we need, we need the healthy, happy bugs to come in and do some work for us on those. Fascinating. Why don't we go outside now and take sure. a look out there. John, I like what you did here around the periphery of the greenhouse. You want to tell us a little bit about it? So on the edge of the greenhouse here, we wanted to put some flowers and other things just to attract beneficial insects, pollinators, and things like that, but also to add some interest for people walking by. This is a, a thoroughfare for our community here. A lot of people coming for summer solstice and other events. Uh, the yoga teacher training are walking up and down this path every day and so we wanted something to kind of soften the greenhouse a little bit so we've planted poppies, pansies, gladiolas, irises, sweet peas, and cabbage. Here 
we've got this four foot sidewall but as you saw inside we have an eight foot sidewall so this is our insulation down here. all right now we're on the north side of the greenhouse which i said before is insulated so there's no sun coming through the north end we don't need it to to be open so we close it off this is where our access points are to get into the greenhouse here you can see our exhaust fan running on the outside pushing all kinds of hot air that we don't need in the greenhouse at the moment out the air pulls through those louvers on the other end across the pond generating lots of nice humidity for inside the greenhouse and keeping things comfortable in there for the plants and for us as we work great john now if someone wants to do a project like this um, are you available for consulting we are actually yes we're consulting on a number of different projects in illinois oklahoma here in new mexico and we're certainly willing to spread the technologies that we use in this operation. And how would somebody find you? You can find us at our website, nmlegacygardens.org. So that's NM like New Mexico? New Mexico, legacygardens.org. Okay, thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, you're welcome, thank you.